and I just give you a little background. This is the time of year where I get emails from generally entering freshmen who break pretty much every rule there is on um, how to appropriately email a faculty member. So I decided to give you guys a, a jump start on it. Um, and I've asked the assistant director of the Center for Undergraduate Research, Jennifer Moses, um, if she could wrap together email etiquette and um, um, also we've seen some interesting things on Zoom we wanted to share because we don't want you to do them. <laughs> and then also uh, Facebook. And, and Jenny has been with us uh, over, just over two years. I mean, she came out of, at Mrs. Moses, uh, out of industry. Um, so she's got a lot of uh, good information on how to uh, be professional in your interactions. So this way you won't be, we talk about the people behind their back if they send me an email that starts out that says, hey, Ann. Okay, you don't want to be that person. Okay, so uh, Mrs. Moses, you wanna take it over? So welcome everyone. Um, I will keep the chat box open, but I may not be able to see it all the time. So I'll let Dr. Donnelly. Come I can watch it. Can. I could do yeah. that. Okay. Great. Um, we'll have a little question and answer at the end if you would like. Um, but today we're just going to talk about um, email, Zoom, and a little bit of social media etiquette, just to kind of prepare prepare you for um, your career in life and that starts now, um, your college career. Um, so let me share my screen. Can you see the slide? Okay. Are you seeing the slideshow or are you just- seeing Yeah, we're seeing it. Okay. Now we're seeing your family. <laughs> now we're seeing it. Okay, perfect. Just want to make sure. I had to click off of it and, and get my presentation window up so I knew where I was going. Um, so like uh, Dr. Donnelly said, my name is Jennifer Moses. I'm the assistant director here at the Center for Undergraduate Research. I um, actually was a student back at UF. I graduated in 2014 and did undergraduate research um, during my career here. I left here and while I was I was doing research while I was here, but after that I went into doing research. I started at research at UF and then went and did research for a nonprofit um, doing biochemistry and molecular biology research, and then left that and went into industry doing cell and gene therapy drugs, and then ended up here. So I am here to hopefully help you um, achieve the same goals that I had when I was a student. So, so today we're going to talk about email etiquette. And Dr. Donnelly has definitely taught me a few things about email etiquette as my time here. Um, but in the age of internet, you might find yourself who can reply, typing up a quick response and then hitting send without giving so much as a thought about what you've just written. Um, but experts say that your email behavior has the potential to sabotage your reputation both personally and professionally. Um, so it is quite important that you know exactly what to do. So the first thing, <laughs> I was able to come up with 19 tips. Um, the first thing is to know your audience. So Dr. Donnelly touched on this a little bit already. Um, you never want to start an email with hi or hi there or hi Ann um, or generally a person's first name unless they're another student that you know that might be at the same level as you. Um, if they're a, a graduate student or above, um, I, I would probably put a little bit more effort into that. Um, if you are in doubt, when in doubt, you're going to assume they are a doctor and you're going to call them doctor so-and-so. Uh, let them correct you if, if, it's, uh, if it's something they want to correct. Otherwise, they'll just be flattered that you think they're a doctor and they'll be happy with you either way. Um, but your email greeting and your sign-off should be consistent with the level of respect and formality of the person you're communicating with. Um, hello, Dr. Donnelly, and sincerely is always appreciated. Um, also write for the person who will be reading it. If they tend to be very polite and formal, write in that, in that same language. Um, the same goes for a receiver who tends to be more informal and relaxed. 
Um, so number two is only discuss public matters. Um, I think we've all heard stories about private emails that ended up being passed around to the entire company. Um, one of the most important things to consider when it comes to email etiquette is whether the matter you're discussing is a public one or something that should be talked about behind closed doors. Ask yourself if the topic being discussed is something you'd write on company letterhead or post on a bulletin board for all to see. Um, so it's not something that you necessarily think about right now, but you definitely want to, 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 to make sure you're keeping your, your emails you know, private. Um, number three, don't be scared to just briefly introduce yourself. Um, do not assume the person that you're emailing knows who you are um, or even remembers meeting you. If, if you're uncertain whether the recipient um, recognizes you or knows who you are, um, then just give a simple reminder of who you are in relation to that person. It's like, hello, Dr. Donnelly. Um, I took your class six years ago um, and you had a great impact. Uh, would love to talk to you further about dot, 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 right? So just reminding her that you were in the certain class um, things like that. Same with other faculty um, that you may be getting in contact with. Um, if you end up having to email some bad news or maybe you're in a conflict or, or anything like that, don't ever email when you're mad. <laughs> maybe give yourself some time to cool down before you email because we all know that when, when we're angry or when we're upset, um, we may have a tendency to say things that we wouldn't necessarily say in the heat of the moment. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, number five, use exclamation points sparingly. So the maximum number of exclamation points that should be in an email, in a professional email, um, one. <laughs> Otherwise, you risk looking um, unprofessional or childish. Uh, so we try to avoid that. Um, I put in there, be careful with confidential information, such as uh, your social security number, things like that. Um, you never know who it could get forwarded to or who could hack into, things like that. So just keep that to yourself. Um, you never want to email that directly to anybody. Uh, respond in a timely fashion. So unless you work in some type of emergency capacity, it's not necessarily to be available the instant email arrives. Um, and this goes on the other end too, and I think I might have put this the number 17 this kind of a tie, ties into that. Um, depending on the nature of the email and the sender responding 24 to 48 hours as a student is acceptable. Um, but number 17 is like at this point in time where we're at, uh, give faculty at least a week to respond. Um, during the summer right now, we say it may even take a little bit longer for that to happen. Um, just because like I said, we got COVID, everybody's kind of in and out. Uh, people are working from home. Some people might not even be in the country. Um, we're just not sure what, what technical availability everyone has. So we kind of got to be a little bit more patient and fluid. Um, second thing is, uh, or a number eight, refrain from sending one-liners. Um, so no need to just hit reply and say thanks or oh, okay. Um, it doesn't advance your conversation in any way. So feel free to put, um, if you have an email that you need to email someone, it's just for information, just put no reply necessary at the top of the email. Um, um, that's completely uh, um, acceptable in this situation. Um, number nine is avoid using shortcuts to real words, emoticons or emojis, um, jargon or slang, um, no text speak in emails, um, words from students from using shortcuts like the number for you, letter U instead of for you, or great for GR8 instead of great. Um, it's not really acceptable in emails. Um, if you wouldn't put a smiley face on your business correspondence, um, like on your LinkedIn profile or anything like that, I wouldn't use it in the email. Uh, keep it clean. Hey, Carol, we're about to start. You have to get off the phone. So nothing annoys recipients more than when people reply and leave messages messy. For example, you reply on an email chain and you see all these extra little what are called carrots. Um, and then the pages and pages and pages of emails after that. Um, no one wants to dig through all that to find the information that you're looking for. So if you can get rid of that, um, that would be great. Any extra lines, like I know when you reply sometime, it, it even gives you like the email sender information. If you don't need it, delete it. Um, make it look as neat as possible. Um, number 11, be clear in your subject line. 
your subject line must match the message. So with our inboxes, and especially right now with all this email communication we have going on, um, we're getting bombarded with emails because it's just one of the only ways we can communicate with people right now. Um, so it's really, really crucial that your subject line matches and gets to the point quickly. Um, it should be reasonably simple and descriptive, um, it, basically describing what you wrote in the email or what's so important about it. Um, expect that any email with a cute, vague, or obscure subject will get trashed. Um, you can also want to think about how long the subject line is. If you notice on Outlook, you have a very short window, or some people have a very short window on the side. Um, your subject line probably is going to get cut off in there, so I would get to the point pretty quickly in that subject line. Um, don't get mistaken for spam. So some things you might not know is in subject lines, if you use all caps, all lowercase, or you put a URL or anything like that in there, it could be seen as spam by the email provider and could go straight to their spam box. Um, only send or copy, number 13, only send or copy others on a need to know basis. Um, use the blind CC feature uh, if needed. So before you click, and this is a good one because I saw this in, in, on the Swampy Memes page earlier this semester where people were clicking reply all, um, and everybody was getting these long, long email chains and everyone was yelling at each other. Um, so before you click reply all, um, make sure that you're checking to see if those people even need to get this email back. If you're emailing just a faculty back and it's got other, all eight other students in your class on there, um, delete those other students. They don't want to see what you write to your faculty. Um, so just, just, yeah, don't click reply all unless you know it needs to go to all. All right, we're getting we're almost getting there. Number 14, keep it short and get to the point. The long email is a thing of the past. Write concisely with lots of white space so as not to overwhelm the recipient. Um, I mean, you wanna be short and concise with what you're trying to say, but also very polite in the meantime. Um, they don't, faculty doesn't wanna to have to read five paragraph essay on you wanting to work in their laboratory. Um, it's just not, 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 and teachers, even your instructors don't want to read long emails talking about questions about an assignment, get quick, to get straight to the point. Um, you're more likely to get an answer for that. And um, you should state the purpose of your email up front, first one to two sentences. After you've introduced yourself, say, I just have some quick questions for you about the course or, you know, something like that. Um, number 15, always include a signature. Uh, you never want people to have to, and if you don't know what a signature is, um, it's at the end of the email, you sign your name, but you also want to put my name, your email address, if you want people to be able to contact you by phone, if you have an e-portfolio, that might be something you want to put down there if you're looking to have people look at it. Um, anything uh, anything like that, that, that gives information on how to contact you back, because you don't want people to have to dig through their email or, or, or try to find you um, through Google um, to get a hold of you. Um, number 16, um, every email that you send adds to or detracts from your reputation. Um, so if your email scattered or disorganized, filled with mistakes, um, this re the recipient that you're sending it to might, might not think highly of you after that. Um, other people's opinions matter in this case. Um, in the professional world, um, you want to come across as the best version of yourself. Um, so keep that in mind as you're sending your emails. Um, number eight, 17, like we said before, give faculty a week to respond during the summer. It might need to be longer. Um, 18 says also, do not start your follow-up email with, I emailed you a week ago and you haven't responded. Um, this comes across as very accusatory, not very nice. Most times people will just delete it and say, excuse me, uh, I know you're not talking to me like that. I'm just going to delete you because you need to be nicer. Um, but that might happen. So just there, there are better ways to say that. Number 19 is avoid using crazy colors or informal fonts. I know everyone thinks it's really funny to use Comic Sans right now. It's in a lot of memes that I've seen. Um, but is in a professional uh, setting, it's not, not ideal. So the next few slides, we're gonna go through some examples of this. 
So some subject line examples, a bad example is subject meeting. Well, if you're like me, I might have 10 meetings in a week. Am I gonna know exactly what that meeting's for? Or you know what reference this email is going towards. Um, so a good example is displaying the meeting. You can also add this information at the end. Like I said, they might not see that information. Um, the 10 a.m. May 25th, they may not see that, but it's at least good to have it on there just in case they do. Um, the second box down here is another email. It just kind of shows you the difference in what these two emails look like, right? First one says, "Thanks for the snakes you sent. I'm sorry to say that two were dead. Send more, please. Talk to you later." Are you, I mean, as a company, if you receive that, are you really going to want to send that person some snakes? You have no idea what happened. You have no idea why, why your snakes died in transit. Um, and it's just not, not as friendly of an email. So the second email is a little bit better. It says, thank you for your shipment of the four ball pythons to our store Pets Alive on March 2nd, 2015. It's given them more information. Um, it says, unfortunately, two of the snakes appear to have been hurt or during the delivery and were deceased when I opened the snake crate. I would like for you to send two replacement snakes as soon as possible. Please email me or call the store for other questions or to make arrangements for new shipment. I would be more likely to send two replacement snakes to that second person than I would the first person. Unfortunately, I don't like snakes, so I'm never gonna be in that situation, so we don't have to worry about that. Another email example, um, and this is just what I talked about. This font, this color, all of these words, not even spelling wandering right. Um, just all in all, I don't even know that I would read this. I'd actually probably look at this and think this was spam and probably automatically delete it. Um, <laughs> your e the email address also, chuck I chuckled a little bit at that. Um, I'm not getting any emails from Hot Stuff 1212, um, but if you have an email that you use that you've had for a long time, that might be something that's a little bit funny or, like I had a student once, their email was Lego My Ego. Like not as uh, professional as you would like to be sending to future faculty that you may be working with or um, career job stuff. So just keep that in mind. At best, just use your UFL email for any correspondence at UF. All right. And then I talked a little bit about the closing of emails and that you want to just use a professional clothing, closing, but don't just end it with your name. Um, try to come up with something a little bit more, more, more professional. So here are some examples of that using best regards, sincerely, thank you, casual best wishes, cheers, um, for more a formal emails, it's like you would write a letter that's yours sincerely, yours faithfully. Um, however, you, you feel comfortable with that, but definitely add a, a sincere ending. So now that we talked about, oh, Dr. Donnelly's muted. There, yeah, before we leave email, I, I wanna, uh, say there's one that on Mrs. Moses' list I want to make sure that you heard, and that is the introduce yourself, because I just checked. I have 14,000 emails in my email right now, um, and if I've met you once in a room of 200 people, I might not remember who you are, and I get emails all the time that say, hi, Dr. Donnelly, what course number do I need to sign up for research? I don't know who the kid is. I don't know what their major is. I can't answer the question. So I have to take the time to email back and say, well, that all depends what major it, it, is your, you know, it, it, it's not an easy. So don't assume that, you, you know, the person knows who you are. And if you're going to ask what research course number it, well, say I'm, um, I'm doing research in microbiology. What course number do I use? You know, give the person enough uh, information that they don't have to spend the time to get it back, you know, go back and forth a couple of times with you. And there's one other thing that students do not know. Um, all UF email is public. Okay. Every piece of email that I send that Mrs. Moses sends and that you send is public. We are in a um, sunshine state, which means we, this, and we work at a state university, which means every single document is public. So you, that kind of confirms what Mrs. Moses said is you do, there are many times where I pick up the phone and talk to someone on the phone because I do, I do not want it in writing. So think that through and just know that you're, it's not your email, it's UF's email. And because it's UF's email, it's the state of Florida. Every resident can ask to see your email should they want to. So I just want to make sure you know that one. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Does anybody have any quick questions about the um, email section? We 
you can feel free to unmute if you do. If you have anything in the chat box, Dr. Dolly, anything in the chat nothing box? Nothing in the so chat far? box. Not. Nope. We're good there. Okay. Well, I'm going to go on if it comes up. Well, if you think of something, just type it in the box and we'll address it at the next little stop sign. Um, so now we're going to touch a little bit on Zoom etiquette. Um, and this is, you know, important right now because most, most of everyone is going to be on Zoom. Your classes are on Zoom, your meetings, um, you've been meeting with faculty probably on Zoom until um, things start to normalize again. Um, but I got not as many tips this time. Um, just 10. So one is just assume that the session is going to be recorded. Um, most people are recording sessions for others to view later, especially something like this workshop here, we are recording it. Um, so we may end up posting it. Um, and you definitely don't want to be doing or saying anything that, that would live forever online. Um, number two is just be respectful and that's just treat others exactly how you would treat them in person. Um, so if you're attending a faculty's class, um, you can't, you know, turn your camera off in class, right? Um, you can't, uh, no, I mean, I guess you can eat unless they tell you you can't, but there's certain things that, that would show, you know, you're not going to answer your phone in class or, you know, mute yourself in class. You can't do any of that. So, um, just keep in mind that the faculty does put in a lot of time in the courses and they, they want to see your face and they want you to be there and be present. Um, so just be respectful in that sense. Um, if you can join early, uh, always try to be there, uh, you know, on time. If you come in late, there's a chance you'll miss something, um, but it's also respectful to, to show up on time. Um, four is mute yourself. Now, you can keep yourself on mute until you're ready to speak, because um, honestly, no one wants to hear your TV uh, or your roommate's conversation, um, your phone ring, uh, your dog's cat's bark, um, just et cetera. No, no, nobody wants to hear any of that, and, you know, when I was putting together this presentation, I saw lots of videos of, of unmuted things that were happening. Someone was listening to like rap music in the background. There were all kinds of swear words and stuff going on and everybody on the call is laughing because that's the only thing they could hear. Um, so there are situations like that that we want to avoid. So make sure that you're muted if you can um, and then just unmute yourself as necessary to interact and speak. Um, <laughs> number five, I don't know why we have to point this out but I feel like we do um, wear clothing. Um, what happens if you don't wear pants and then you stand up and then you need to go like unlock a door and you didn't realize your camera was on and uh, it's just not a good situation for anybody involved. Um, so just wear clothing uh, and decent clothing if you can. Um, modesty is always a good policy when it comes to school stuff. So that's just keep that in mind. Um, Number six, and I touched a little bit this on, on the be respectful part, is like although video is not required, um, we, and we understand that internet connection sometimes can dictate that too, right? Sometimes if you have a bad internet connection, if you try to turn the video on, it slows everything really down and then it makes it really choppy and, um, and we get that, but um, we encourage you to pay respect to your teachers or anybody that you're on the Zoom call by having um, your camera on um, just so you can just be that person in present, you know, person present in the conversation. Number seven, don't drive while you're on Zoom. It should be the same as texting and driving, right? Uh, you you want to listen, I think that's fine, but if you're trying to really interact and have conversations and really pay attention, driving's probably not the best policy. Um, number eight, don't go, don't take your device to the bathroom with you. You never know if you're going to like click a button and then all of a sudden everybody's going to see you in a really terrible position and Again, no one wants to see any of that. Um, number nine, raise your hand if you have questions. Um, there's, you can even do that, like if you're on your video and you just wanna raise your hand, you can do that. The teacher will see that most likely because they'll have them in a view where the, everybody's you know, present. Um, but if not, there is a feature on Zoom that allows you to actually click a button that says raise hand and then the teacher automatically sees that you have a hand raised and they'll answer questions that way. Um, and last is say your name when you speak, especially in a class that's really large and there's like, you know, 300 people on the teacher's window. Um, you're going to want to introduce yourself um, before you talk because it's hard to tell which box uh, the voice is coming from. So, yeah. So next are some great Zoom examples. This one, 
I was dying today on this because I did not know that this was actually a real thing, but it was. And it says, my boss turned herself into a potato on our Microsoft Teams meeting and can't figure out how to turn the setting off. So she was stuck like this the entire meeting. And luckily, um, yeah, I, I found the follow-up to it, which was really funny. It says, the good news is that my boss will not be sacking me tomorrow. We hashed it all out tonight, and our team is still laughing with you all. Stay planted at home, and welcome to my potato boss. And then she responded, I am potato boss. You should see me in a crown, right, Billie Eilish? I am glad this is making folks laugh at this time. Please stay planted at home and safe for more needed laughs. Follow my favorite comedian. And so <laughs> she did turn a really awkward, funny situation into a funny situation. Um, and stuff like that is going to happen. Um, I have a cat at home, and when I've been at home, it's pretty much just walked by the camera probably 20 times. And I don't know what to do because my door doesn't lock, and he knows how to open the door. So he just walks by, and I just go with it and I do my best um, but we know things like that are going to happen um, and I appreciate the comedic relief a little bit um, so next so WFH is work from home so always be aware of what's in your background so if you have a meeting on zoom just make sure that you don't have anything back here that might be deemed inappropriate by anybody you can see this guy's face. He was clearly mortified after the fact. This was another one. First class of the day, professor asked us to unmute our mics to make the classroom setting on Zoom more real. Now listening to the lecture, plus two people breathing heavily and one munching on chips loudly into the microphone. So nobody wants to be the breathe heavy person and nobody wants to be the chip munching person. So probably best to just stay far enough away from your mic and not eat while you're on the call. This one was funny too, because this is so something my child would do. It says, my son discovered the virtual background setting during his Zoom class. I was in the other room and heard his teacher say who turned themselves into Danny DeVito. Um, so it's funny. I, I mean, there's definitely a time and place. It depends on the course, your instructor, conversation. If <laughs> I wouldn't do this if you were going to an interview um, or if you were trying to impress a, a faculty mentor. Um, it may work for some. If you came to mind with like Harry Potter in the background, I might, you know, be more likely to talk to you if that's the case, but you never know. And just assume that the person is not a fan of any virtual backgrounds or any crazy, you might not be a DeVito fan. So just, just assume. Um, this one's great too, because everyone's seeing this person online doing a whole face mask and everything while the teacher's talking. So don't be this person either, because um, you might end up a viral meme, right? This also kind of shows disrespect to the teacher, right? You're not really paying attention, you're pampering yourself at the same time. So does anybody have okay. any questions about- Yeah, let me pipe in on Zoom. Uh, yeah, go ahead. That funny, you know, we chuckle about work clothes but it, ha it has been reported that at least one UF student on a Zoom class call didn't have a shirt on, all right? Um, so it seems silly, but you have it. And the other thing I wanna point out, I noticed, except Benedict, nobody's got a picture fake placeholder on their Zoom. Um, if you do have a picture, make sure that picture is professional, like Benedict's looks good. Um, I think Benedict's is Bob Saget though, if I had to guess, yeah. am I correct? He says yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so at least it's professional looking, right? It is. Very, it's very um, professional. But you, yeah, so you want to be careful of those things too, because whereas the kind, some you know funny things you do with your friends, you, you got to not do those when you're in a classroom setting, which unfortunately that's what we are. Okay. So anyway, yeah, wear a shirt. Okay. I mean, I, I think you guys can see my. Oh, um, can I can I do it now? If I stop my video, yeah, I have a person of myself in a gator shirt. I'm, you know, not doing anything. Can I show easy. mine? Yeah, go, go for it. I don't I'll know. You have to do stop do video. Show, how do I show? I gotta say none. How do I show it? You go stop video. Click that three little dots by the mute oh. and hit stop video. Did okay, just, did it work? I don't know. You went. You went away. I disappeared. Anyway, I got a cool one too. If I knew how to use it, I would do it. There it is. 
There it is. Oh yeah, see? see? You want to describe your picture? Okay, so yeah, that's an uh, executive office building across from the White House where I got to go uh, four summers ago. Um, so that's my grown up outfit at the, visiting the White House. So I figured that was a good one to put on there. Yeah, very good. Okay. So yeah, so definitely want to just present yourself, like I said, the best possible version of yourself in all of these forms, email, online, and now we're going to touch a little bit on social media, online identity. Um, does anybody have any questions about the Zoom information? I mean, a lot of this is kind of common sense, but a lot of this you might not think about right now. Um, so I'm hoping that it's at least, a, you know, a little bit helpful for you and you're getting some new information. So online identity. So online identity is defined as the sum of all the information on the internet about an individual. Um, so you have what's called the media ecology, right? It's this environment of you online. Um, people, when you start to do job search, they'll actually Google you, they'll look for you, they'll find out what's, what, what's posted about you. Um, anything that you've shared is, is not private. Um, so here, this came from the Own Secure Protected um, site, this National Cyber Cybersecurity Awareness Month um, flyer that they made. Um, but it's t it's, it says own and it says it, it's in big letters because it's your information technology or IT, right? It's up to you. Um, so it says there's more than 3 billion people on the internet. Not all of them are who they say they are. So keep your friends list small and never friend anyone you don't know in real life. Um, also something to keep in mind is the internet never forgets. Um, with archive sites, screen caps, the quick spread of information on social media, the internet never forgets a mistake. You may dance like nobody's watching, but post like everyone is watching. Um, another thing down here says take it slow. Attackers will often goad people into making quick decisions, hoping to take advantage of your mistakes. Think fast, but type slow and they can't touch you. Um, sharing is not caring. It's tempting to share everything about your life, but what you share can be used by someone else. Um, with that information, an attacker can impersonate you or break into your accounts on different sites. Um, and you probably have seen this multiple times on Facebook where you get a friend request from somebody that's already on your friend list, that's already using the same picture. Um, and then it ends up being just a spam. Um, somebody trying to use that information to sell things and then they send out mass messages. Um, so definitely uh, kind of take a look at your accounts and make sure that your privacy settings are right um, before you, you know, go forward with your online posting. So like it or not, your future boss is checking you out. Um, so transmitting any material in any manner that is disruptive, threatening, profane, abusive, harassing, embarrassing, <laughs> tortuous, defamatory, I can't even say that word right now, obscene, Libelous or an invasion of another person's privacy may be hazardous to your future. Um, so anything like that that you post um, that that can't that fits any of those categories um, could end up potentially affecting you down the road. And we've seen this multiple times with with old Facebook posts being, being brought up from seven years ago on people that may be in political positions. Um, even police officers right now are facing that a lot where people will go way back on their Facebook post to find something that they can twist and use. Um, so you got to be careful because it does live there forever. And if anyone and, and your friends or anything like that can, can make the decision to share something from your page um, that doesn't always shine the best light on you. Um, so let's take a look at some examples. So this person was fired over a Facebook post. So she was a school teacher um, and she posted this on Facebook, this picture right here. Um, and she was asked to resign from the high school um, after posting these pictures of herself um, drinking. And one was at the Guinness factory in Ireland. Um, and then she also posted some Facebook posts with um, some ex expletives, so um, not nice language and stuff on there. Um, so anything you post can be used against you, especially most companies now have a social media policy or an online policy where they don't want you posting certain things. Um, so something you want to keep in mind as you're, you're navigating this social media stuff. This is another one right now. Um, this girl posted this on Facebook. Uh, 
she said, I guess is, I don't know if this is a fine or not, but she's basically work sucks right now. Um, one of her coworkers that was a friend um, shared the post with the boss and she ended up getting fired. So definitely got to be careful what you're posting. Um, this one was very interesting to me because this person actually posted this picture um, of himself with this with a three-year-old to Facebook um, the seemingly innocent picture of the two quickly received a bunch of racist comments from the guy's friends um, who insinuated all these things that the boy was a slave hungry poor in addition to liking him to Kunta Kinte and the main character in Alex Haley's roots um, he got fired for that so he didn't even make the comments. He just posted a picture with his boss's child and ended up getting fired because of the people that he associates with and the comments that his friends made on his post. Um, so also something to think about with that. So then you're probably asking, what can I post? Uh, or should I just give up social media altogether? Um, but really, you just have to be intentional with what you put out there into the world. Really think about what you're, you're trying to portray um, to everyone, whether it be Facebook, um, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, any of that. You just need to be intentional and make sure that you're portraying a, the person that you would want to be hired later on in life. Um, so create this positive image on social media and, and who you want to be viewed as. Um, you can also clean up any old posts or pictures that could be used against you later on. Um, like Dr. Donnelly said, especially for Zoom, but even for social media, use a professional photo. Um, just something that looks nice. I mean, people can take great headshots now with a high phone. Um, just have a friend take it of you in profile mode and you're good to go. Um, and also, like I said, you can adjust those privacy settings so people can't view anything that's on your, your site except for close friends and family. Um, they may be able to see your profile picture, but they won't be able to see any of your other photos, um, anything like that. And if you guys have any questions about how you can adjust your privacy settings or would like to come in one day and talk about that, um, you're more than welcome to stop by my office and we can work that out. All right, so there's going to be a little few examples. So I'm going to ask some questions and I want you guys in the chat box, if you can, uh, give me what you think about it. So are there any details on these following profiles that you think might influence whether or not they get a job? All right. So here's the first one. Eliza Edelstein, looks like her LinkedIn profile. Um, product marketing growth at SurveyMonkey, went to Columbia University. Human brain's a crazy place, and there are two things that fascinate me most about product and growth marketing. First, the concept of consumer logic and how rational yet irrational it can be. And second, the challenge of communicating in a way that persuades and convinces consumers always require optimization. So you're optimizing for something that is both rational and irrational. Um, so what do you guys think? Um, do you think this person would get a job? Knowing what you know as far as their profile photo, um, what they've written, is it professional? Let me know in the chat box or feel free to unmute yourself and, and speak up. Grace says yes. I've got a yes, yeah. Okay, yeah. Gina. What if, want another yes, yes. Dr. Donnelly, would you hire this person? I'm thinking it's a trick, but. <laughs> it's not a trick, it's not a it, it's But not I would have said yes. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'd I'm, say yes too. Her photo is really good. People in the yeah. background. I mean, she looks like she's at a professional speaking engagement. Um, so I would take that as she's got some speaking experience. Um, so yeah, I would say exactly. I would say this is a really good profile. So this one, the next one, we'll go to the next one. Tell me what you think about this guy. He owns a gym. Would you go to his gym? Would you hire him to work in your gym? Would you buy equipment from him if he sells gym equipment? Not real sure what he does, um, but any of that, I mean, what do you see as far as his picture? Is anything, any comments? Can be honest. Okay. He looks frightened. He does look frightened, very frightened. Um, does it, is, the, is the picture professional? No. 
No. Um, so just because that picture isn't professional makes all of us question whether or not we would actually trust this individual, um, especially in the gym industry or manufacturing industry or whatever it is, because the picture is not a headshot, a good headshot, or um, maybe something that's even just in his environment. Um, it, it just affects our perception of it. Um, so here's two more. And I think that's it, right? For this one, I think it's it. Is if he just changed that picture, he probably would have a completely different outcome on what, you know, and I just totally made up the scenario, by the way. I have no idea if he actually runs a gym or owns a gym. I just made it up. Here are two other photos that are probably more <laughs> relatable for you as okay. students. Um, you finished four years in college. You're now a senior and you're applying to work at Merrill Lynch. Again, making up a scenario, have no idea. Uh, you've interviewed and now they're doing background check or Facebook checks and they see these as your profile pictures. Do you think you're going to get the job? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they need to change their pictures for sure. Yeah, probably not the best. Um, I mean, first guy, if he's applying for a bartending job, might be the perfect thing. Um, might be what he's looking for. I have no idea. Um, second girl, same thing. I mean, although it's not, a, you know, it's just not the look that you're trying a professional look if you're trying to apply for, you know, mortgage lending, or I don't even know what Merrill Lynch does, but I'm pretty sure that's what they do. The banking, I don't know. But anyway, so just keep that in mind that the person that you're seeing, that, that you're posting on social media, um, it's the person that these people are, are, are going to ultimately be hiring. And if you wouldn't hire that person, then they're not going to hire that person either. You um, know, I want to point out, it's not just your potential boss. Right. Right. It could be the graduate school you're applying to. It could be the medical school you're applying to. It could be the law school you're applying to. Um, there's a step between, you know, undergraduate, if there's a step for you between undergraduate and in the working world, all of those places can be also looking, yeah. all right? And this is why this is so good right now, right? Because this gives you a chance to really, you know, take a- Clean really it up now, right? Yeah. yeah. Know what to post, what not to post. Um, I mean, if you're on Snapchat with friends and things like that, uh, you're probably, uh, you know, able to send things like that to your friends without it being in the virtual world forever. But um, always think that your stuff can be screen captured. And um, like I said, if you just say the wrong thing to somebody, then they may have, you know, piles of, of revenge mail against you. Um, so just something to think about. And it dotted on makes a great point about schools. Um, if, like I said, even if you're just looking to go work in a laboratory to do undergraduate research, there's a possibility that your, your faculty mentor might look at your Facebook profile because they may have a little bit more strict guidelines on what, what they're, um, what they're looking for. So, and you know, the interesting thing is you might not get a position or, or a placement and never know why. Yeah. So that is all that I have. Um, is there any questions on any of this, uh, anything else you might want to know or anything I touched on that might've been confusing? I think I talked pretty fast. <laughs> that was good timing though, 45 minutes, 15 minutes yeah. for questions if needed. Now's your chance. Do you have any questions about what might be appropriate or not? Or And if there's ever a question about it, if you ever are questioning, I wonder if this is appropriate to say or do or post, um, if it's questionable, then it's probably a no. Just assume it's a no, right? Um, and then if you ever get to a point where you're trying to write an email that might be difficult and, and you don't know what to say, you have us as resources that can help you with that. Okay, well, if there are no other questions, uh, if you can do a virtual clapping for Mrs. Moses, um, and we will put this on the um, CAR uh, website so that if you have friends who weren't able to come and would be interested in doing that, um, you can tell them they'll be able to find it there, okay? 
it's an emergency and I can't email a week beforehand, what should I do? Okay, you wanna do that, Ms. Moses? If there's an emergency and I can't email a week beforehand, what should I do? Um, do you mean as far as you have an emergency and you're not gonna be able to do what you've done or you need to do? Is that what you're talking about? Yes, okay. So you have to just get in touch with them as soon as possible. I mean, there's no way around that. And then if you can't get in touch with them that week beforehand, um, you follow up and you say, when, when you can get in touch with them, um, you want to say, I am so sorry, I wasn't able to contact you a week beforehand. I know that that's required of you. I was in this situation. Try to be as honest and as open as you can. Um, if it's something you're not comfortable, you can say that. You can say, I, you know, I've been in a situation that I'm just not comfortable talking about or um, but just try to be honest and open about it and get in contact with them right away. Most faculty men members or, or even um, job situations are going to be very flexible as long as you keep, you know, try to communicate as best as possible. You want to add anything to that, Dr. Donnelly? Donnelly? I was going to say the same thing. You know, I have students that will email me and, and say, I am so sorry for such late notice, but this has come up and can you help me? And as long as they are be respectful of the fact of my time and know that they're asking for a favor. I'll say yes, but dark chocolate has to follow, right? <laughs> she, she requires candy as a bride. Um, no. Yeah, yeah good. but yeah, it just I, I agree. You just be apologetic and say, you know, I'm so sorry, but I couldn't get to you earlier and this is my situation. Most faculty are, you know, humans. Anything else? Well, thank you so much for you guys coming and, and listening to me talk about this. And if you guys, like I said, have any more questions, feel free to email me um, or Dr. Donnelly. Either of us will probably be able to answer and we will be in the office um, at the start of the semester as well. And we'll be setting up appointments for that. So let us know if you need anything. All right, everybody. Have a good weekend. Stay healthy. Stay yeah. safe. Wear those masks, right? Yeah. <laughs> thank you. All right. Talk to you soon, guys. Bye. Bye.